What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So here I am at the Independent Garden Show here at McCormick Place over by Chicago, Illinois. I'm not gonna do a ton of video here, but I did come in early yesterday and I get to take a walk all the way through downtown Chicago and check out some lawns, some landscapes, and do a little kind of fun walk and talk video. So I thought you guys would enjoy that. So with that, let's get right into some Chicago lawns over by downtown. Here's a nice patch of green grass. This is uh, Michigan Avenue, 1430. I think I'm south. You think you have problems with sunlight. They got trees, trees, buildings. They gotta have all kinds of challenges keeping sun on this patch, but it's it's fairly dense. It looks good. Really large redbud tree here too. Beautiful actually. Double redbud there. It's a double redbud tree. There's no access to get on this, so I'm not sure if you're supposed to walk on it, but what else is grass here for if you don't walk on it? That's plantain right there. This is definitely Kentucky bluegrass, some fine fescue in here as well. It's pretty. You can see even in here it's go, oh, it's well irrigated too. Pretty little stand of grass. There's some crabgrass right there, classic crabgrass. Dandelion right there. That actually might be false dandelion. There's a real dandelion. I think that's false dandelion right there. It's weird, you can see some dappling of blue. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little bit lighter over there. I wonder if they seeded or something. A lot of darker blue in here, unless this is from dogs peeing. People letting their dogs pee in here. I don't know. See how that's like super dark blue? Or maybe something coming out of these beds. These look fairly fresh. This is definitely a spot that was reseeded right here. That's fescue, fine fescue. If you look at this close, you can see this was sodded this year. I talk a lot about shade. Again, look at all the shade you gotta deal with here, plus these trees, you know. Even here, this, this is a residential building. It's real close. Looks like they resodded this this year and it didn't take. See how you can still see squares? You can see a lot of squares in there. It's like it, it just didn't hold. I bet you they resod this every year. Now this is from dogs for sure. There's more dogs in this neighborhood than there are people. I would put my hand in that and test it, but I guarantee you that's dog pee spots. And you'll notice they're they're not consistent all the way down, so what that would tell me is the residents here have a dog, maybe a female dog, some people say, but either way, their dog has really hardcore pee, because you don't see it all the way down, maybe down there a little bit, but definitely this residence here, hardcore dog pee. Look at that, right there. This is probably when the dogs get lazy in the winter. Boom, 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 pee, pee, pee. I think lawns in Chicago are pretty much just dog toilets. Seems like what they're mainly used for. See now down here, these residents, maybe they don't have dogs because you don't see it. But I can still see these squares. Can you see this? See these straight lines? That's never nature. Yeah, I think this was resodded and it's just, these are also dog pee spots where they get darker. That's a weaker dog. That's a fertilizer dog. So back there you had dog with super strong pee and here you have dog with fertilizer pee. I wonder if you could tell the breed of dog that's in every one of these houses by the pattern and the what the pee does to the grass. Like a genetic dog pee marker. I wonder if you could consider that like dog pee fingerprints. Oh, and here we are in a dog pee park. Look at all those peers out there. There's some classic clover. I once heard somebody ask if uh, a weed killer that was designed to kill clover was harmful to bees or not. And I would say, well, if bees enjoy being on clover and you kill the clover, I would say that's, that's harmful to the bees, right? If bees like clover and you kill clover, bees don't like that. It's not about the chemicals, it's about what you do to the weeds. I don't want you guys to think I'm against dogs, because I'm not. I love dogs as much as anybody does, but you know, there are certain things that are natural enemies to lawns. And the two major enemies are trees and dogs, and there happens to be a lot of them here in the city, so. 
you know, people don't move to the city to have lawns, typically. At least not this far into the city. Even though here's a pretty one over here. Oh, but there we go, telltale sign. Somebody's been trying to do a good job growing this. See, can you see sod was dropped in right here? Can you see these squares? Look, there's the line right there where it didn't close up. I don't know, I, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but I can see all the squares in here. There you go, see? So this was just recently sodded, that's why it's looking good. Maybe they don't allow the dogs to pee back in here. Hey, lots of earthworms. It's real pretty down here. Now you know why it hasn't been cut, even though it's due for its first cut. Uh-oh. Somebody came out and peed in the new sod. And right there, too. There we go. Chicago Bears over by there. Dan Alliance. What are you guys doing up throwing seeds this late in the year? Are you confused? You're supposed to do this in the springtime. One thing about killing dandelions in the fall, they're a little tougher because they've been growing all year and so they literally have a thicker skin. Really tough to kill dandelions in the fall. Better in the spring, but you can go after them. A little 2,4-D, a little dicamba action over by there. You don't want these curl these guys right up, curl and twist them right up into nothing. See you later, Dan Alliance. What do we got here? A little thistle right there. Don't pick those, they'll get you. I'm a trained professional. Check out those roots, John Perry. Oh yeah, see there's the sod trying to hang onto the hill. How do you grow grass on a hill? Sod it. I wonder how it would be living right next to the train track like that. That's crazy. Here's something I always wondered. This lawn here is completely in jail. It's elevated, first of all. And it's it's 100% in jail. How do you even access that to cut it? What do you cut that with? They got sprinklers out. They obviously care. But what are you cutting that whole thing with a weed whacker? These right here, these are called taxes used. Every house, every villa, every cottage in a Chicagoland area has one of these in front. The thing about them is when you prune them, they smell like cat pee. Here's a nice lawn. These are some rich people with this lawn. That's pretty. I don't know what that goes for. I mean, we're only a couple blocks from the lake here. These are those winged euonymus. When I was at my father-in-law's, I showed you burning bushes. These are a little bit more mature and they've been taken care of. You can see they've been hacked back. Actually, I think that's probably somebody hacking them because they're growing over the sidewalk, but you can see they get hacked back and they grow back nice. These areas are probably a little bit dead or they got whacked in the summer, but yeah, these have been recently cut. I wanted to point out, this is why they're called winged. You can see here on the stems here, see the wings? So you can tell these in winter if all the leaves are falling off. You can tell it's a burning bush or a winged euonymus because of those wings right there. Very hardy plants, and they turn bright red as their fall color. That's why they're called burning bushes. One thing to note though, when they don't get full sun, they don't turn as red. So I highly doubt that these turn very red because once again, they're not getting a ton of sun. And I even think some of this dieback that we're seeing in these is just from lack of sun. They are definitely a full sun plant. Wow, here's a rarity. This is an ash tree. Most of the ash have been killed by emerald ash borer. This one's riddled with anthracnose too. Come on, short guy. There we go. See that on the leaves? This is not the best example. There's some better examples up tall, up high. It's called anthracnose. Let's see if I can reach a, here we go. Here, here's telltale anthracnose right here. See that leaf cupping and curling with that brown? That's anthracnose. But that's not really the most common thing. Almost every ash tree I've ever seen around here has it. It's emerald ash borer. See if you can see any holes where they've entry, entry holes. Or maybe they treated this one. It's awful small. Yeah, they did treat it. There you go. Look, see, it's been treated for EAB. 2016 and 13. So it's probably got, I think they get two years. Bureau of Forestry, 2016. That's super cool. So they did decide to save this one, even though it's small. 
That's what that is. That indicates EAB treatment. I think the treatment's last two years, so it, it might be due unless they're just done. I don't know. Here's another ash. So, I bet you the Neighborhood Association paid sometimes. Yeah, see, look, here you go. This one was treated in 2016, but I don't see the marker for another year unless it fell out. See, here, this is an ash here. This one fell out. Here's the marker right here. 2016. It's like the nail fell out. Don't prosecute me, I just wanna look at your grace. Park Row, pretty grass in here. It's thin, but it's beautiful. Definitely fine fescue here. You ever wanna know what fine fescue looks like? There it is. Looks like they freshly seeded all down through here. Somebody just freshly seeded these edges. Could be tough. Really tough. Dense shade. You're getting some germination already, though. How's it going there, boys? You guys uh, ready for some sprout and pout? You moist enough under there? You hang in there. You got a short life ahead. A lot of dog pee on top of your head. These here, these are like some old school crab apple trees. I say old school. I think all the new ones are put on root stock, but these get a real bad disease called apple scab and it makes all the leaves fall off that's why you'll see the leaves all down here falling off and what that does is it hits starts them in the spring they all get it all these old school ones and then it just makes the leaves fall off prematurely you can see how thin these are it's still august and then the other thing they do is they send up a bunch of suckers which are these you got to keep these pruned out these rob the top of the tree you know of all the nutrients but apple scab is very prevalent on these old school crab apples here I'll show it to you there it is right there see that best thing to do with these is keep them thinned out that's why we want to keep all those suckers out of there because the disease like any disease it'll spread from leaf to leaf by the wind so if you keep them thinned out it helps to keep the disease down and then you can spray them with eagle fungicide that's the best thing I ever used and you want to hit them right when the leaf right when the flowers fall off in the spring you want to come in and hit them with Eagle, and then you do three sprays in a row, 10 days apart, bing, bing, bing. And that'll prevent a good bit of this apple scab, because that's really when it gets started, and you can get to it ahead of time. Most of you probably don't have these old school ones, though. They're cool, though, but that's why most of them that you see that are still alive are really thin like this, because eventually the disease does kill the tree, because it needs leaves to photosynthesize, so, you know, pieces of it all die off. And these are hawthorn trees right here and I can see this right here they got this cedar apple rust look at that see that white stuff on there that's cedar apple rust Ugh. yummy that's what that is look at that it's another fungus another disease problem cedar apple rust Looks like aphids or something on there, opportunistically coming in. I don't know, maybe that's aphids. I don't think so though. They're moving. Maybe it's a scale insect. Maybe that's a soft-bodied scale insect and I'm wrong. Because they're moving. So my battery, let's get a better background. So my battery on a GoPro died, so I can't do any more uh, videos, videos, but that's all right, because the, 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 the stretch of my knowledge has come to an end anyway. Now the reason I'm talking like this, and the reason I did this video is I want to recommend you guys to a, to a channel I discovered that I think you're really gonna love, and it's called Crime Pays But Batney Doesn't. It's this guy, he's got this really thick Chicago accent. I'll link below, because the local news did a video telling you about who he is. But he basically goes all over the country, including Chicago, and he just identifies these plants from like out of nowhere. And he talks like this, and it's awesome. It's freaking hilarious. So something you want to check out. I know those guys will love it as much as I love it, too. It's just good entertainment, and you learn something all at the same time. And you get to listen to a guy with a better accent than I got. Hey, well, I was just walking by this place. This looks pretty cool. No dogs allowed. I bet they got nice grass in there, then.
Here's another hawthorn, and I'm sure this is cedar apple rust right there. That for sure is cedar apple rust. I think that other thing I saw was scale insects. I mean, Al, it's called cedar apple rust. It's going to be on the cedar apples, right, Brad? Not on the stems. I don't know anything about flowers except how beautiful these are. Wow, this is a really pretty little oasis right here in the middle of the South Loop. See, these crab apples don't have apple scabs, so they must be a different, uh, these are a different variety or something that's more resistant, see? Look at how pretty that is. Magnolia tree here. Magnolia are cool because they grow everywhere, south, north. Pretty flowers in spring. What is this, sage, I think? Ooh, that's a pretty water feature right there. Look at this ground ivy even in here, competing with the prairie grass. Go away, ground ivy. You're a jerk. 